Brown Swanson and welcome to Around the Peninsula. Today we are at the Point Vicente Interpretive Center because we are going to have a whale of a time to talk about the upcoming whale of a day. I am being joined by PVIC's director manager, Holly Starr. It's always great to be with you to talk about the festivities that are coming up here, March 2nd, whale of a day. Thank you so much, and it is always a pleasure to be with you, Liz. This year is our 29th year for the Whale of a Day, and we are so excited. We have um, quite a few returnees coming back. We have the Aquarium of the Pacific Touch Tank, which is always a popular event, and that's sponsored by Harbor Breeze uh, Cruises. And then we have um, live animals. Last year we had the timber wolf, eagle, and the llama, and this year we are going to have animals as, as long as the weather holds. Of course, the big celebration here with Whale of a Day is to celebrate the whale migration. And so we're inside today to enjoy the inside of Interpretive Center, but outside is where the whale counting is happening, the census. Talk about just what's going to be going on that day outside. Oh, what we normally have about 20 different organizations, for environmental organizations, Palos Verdes Land Conservancy, um, Native Plant Society, so um, environmental organizations throughout the peninsula. And then we have activities for the kids, we have whale watching, of course, is going on. That's, this is one of our biggest years for whale watching. It's beat um, the last average of 10 years. We've, we've actually beat the number as they're seeing. So we're hoping to see lots of whales on Whale of a Day. The reason we have it on the first um, Saturday of the month is generally the whales are going both north and south. And it's our best opportunity for people to see them from the shore. And this is such an amazing spot to, to check out for the whales. We are so close. Um, between here and Catalina when the whales are coming through. Why is this such a great place? Well, this is, we actually go out, people think the whales come in, but we actually jet out into the water. So if you can imagine a cove with a little um, widow's peak in it, that's us, we're the widow's peak. So we jet out into the water. So we're meeting them on their, on their straight trajectory. Sometimes they hear the whales below the cliffs before we spot them, they are that close in. When you come inside the Interpretive Center, it's all about celebrating the whale and the migration. We got, we got whales above us. Talk about just the education that takes place here. Well, and we, we do a lot of edutainment. So it's kind of entertaining to see the big models and the skeletons. Uh, Serena is a juvenile um, whale that we had installed about a year and a half ago, skeleton. And then, of course, we have the baby. This would be representative of a newborn with the mom directly behind. We have exhibits on the natural and cultural history of the peninsula with emphasis on the migration of the Pacific Gray Whale. If you look at our Indian exhibit, you'll notice that the um, father is holding a whale effigy, but the mom is sitting on a whale vertebrae um, through, our, through our little vignette here of the uh, tide pools and the cliffs of Palos Verdes. We have whale blows going up. So it's exciting to see just how many tie-ins we have. And you are very passionate about the marine life here. And what, what motivates and inspires you? I think just being here. I actually was a member of the American Cetacean Society when I was 17, I, taking out the whale boats when I was 18. So I would say that the master John Olguin from San Pedro, man of the century, was actually a huge influence on me. And he was always great to have here at Whale of the Day. And for, you know, he did pass recently, but um, his memory lingers on and all the fun activities oh, yes. with the kids, drawing, telling stories and all of that. It's really quite a day here to celebrate the whales. One thing is that, of course, the city of Rancho Palos Verdes co-hosts Whale of a Day with um, Los Serenos, a very important organization. They run the docents here. Talk about the role of Los Serenos here. Yeah, actually, Los Serenos was started by the city when we opened the Interpretive Center, recognizing that we needed volunteers to um, get the mission out and to be the ombudsman from the general public. And Los Serenos has, it's been, it's been magic to watch them grow in their activities. They now have a fourth grade program for the PVUSD schools, a sixth grade program on geology for the same schools. They take out more than 3,000 kids a year on the hikes and tours that are scheduled. They do tens of thousands within the museum that comes in. There's, there's always a docent on duty to give free tours here and just um, get the information out. And then recently, um, in the last five years, well, since 2007, I guess it's six years now, Joe Woods, one of the docents, um, designed a poster contest for the local schools to take part in. Wow, speaking of poster contests, we've got one for Whale of a Day. And this is um, a picture from Chloe Dawes. She's a sixth grader with Merrill Est Intermediate School. So all three of the intermediate schools participated. And in fact, and this doesn't always happen, but this year the first, second, and third place 
are all from different schools. Um, and tonight at City Council, we'll actually have um, all of the winners, including the uh, honorable mentions there. Because they're all winners if they participate. They are. 73 students turned in their work. Their art teachers actually worked with them and made the poster contest part of the art class. So w all of them were exceptional. Right. Very, very fun to get the, continue to get the youth involved. Also, another way the youth are involved here is the junior docent program. My son actually is now going through the training. He's very excited. It's really fun. And we're really excited to have them. So every year, every year the... Um, the docents meet with the teachers actually at the schools. The teachers have to recommend the students and then they go through an interview process. They have between six and eight three hour training programs and then they serve both in the museum and on the trails with veteran docents and they'll, you'll certainly see them at Whale of a Day. So you right. will see the junior docents um, they'll be both wearing giving, their vests. They'll be they'll wearing <laughs> their golden vests and their, and their Los Serenos tags. Um, giving out information and they really are a wonder when you see them with younger kids because they connect I think they connect easier with the youth. And it's so. been really exciting. I know as my son's going through and coming home with all this information, he's learning about the topography, the geography, marine life, all of that. It's just an amazing wealth of information that's so wonderful and so we're, we're really excited for that. And of course, um, we talked about Los Serranos being the co-sponsor. I had the opportunity um, earlier to talk with Dan Crane. He is now president of the organization. Just to find out more about what this group does and how you can get involved. So we're going to take a break and visit with Dan Crane. Well, Los Serranos uh, provides the docent services for the uh, Point Vicente Interpretive Center here. In addition, we... Uh, uh, guide uh, hikes in the RPV open spaces, and uh, we bring school groups through the museum as well. And what is really the mission of the group? Well, the mission is to assist the city uh, in managing the museum, honestly. We do always uh, co-sponsor Whale of a Day, and it's one of the great fun days of the year. It's some, there are certain volunteer jobs that uh, give the give us volunteers a lot of satisfaction. We can, if we can hear people talk to us and thank us about giving back, when in fact, we're having a lot of fun ourselves and Whale of a Day is just exactly that kind of event. Of course, they're having a busy year. Banner, you're seeing whales out here and we always get whales on Whale of a Day. Any tips for whale watching? Uh, look at the ocean. <laughs> if you look in the trees, you won't see whales. But there are so many whales out here. Uh, for Whale of a Day, uh, we choose the first Saturday in March because that is the very peak uh, historically of the whale season. So look at the ocean, you'll see whales. If you hear the bell ring uh, out here on the, uh, on the patio, it's because uh, the whale spotters from uh, Whale Watch have spotted a whale. So come out to the back when you hear the bell ring and you'll see a whale. And talking with Dan Crane, encouraging the community members to come get involved with Los Serenos. You really depend on these docents and these volunteers here. Absolutely. We have more than 150 um, active docents, and uh, we need every one of them and then some. Between the hiking programs and the, um, they actually have a lot of social activities too that they do on the side for their members, but the education programs are key, and with, like I said before, the added education, the fourth grade, sixth grade, junior docents, um, nature series um, that the junior docents work on, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of activities. There's a lot happening here at PVIC all the time. Um, this venue can be used by community members if they want to have parties, talk about um, how this is open and available for people to use. Well, and we, we get a lot of community use, Liz. Um, the interior room, we have up to 150 people. The lanai doors make it both an inside-outside venue. We have a beautiful amphitheater that comes. A lot of people like to leave, be a part of our history, and they have whale plaques or amphitheater plaques, so you can remember a loved one that way, or just have something for your family to come down and take a look at. Uh, the gift store is always great if you're looking for something special. You and I have talked about that <laughs> before. Um, staff is happy to put together a package for, say, a seven-year-old boy. We can do shark books and shark grabbers and fun stuff or volcanoes blowing up. 
but um, this is a great resource. Last year we put up Serena, so each year we're trying to do just a little bit more to keep it fresh and, and active. And of course, you said 29 years of PVIC. Of course, this is the city's 40th anniversary. So yes, there's a lot is. to celebrate in Rancho Palos Verdes, along with Whale of a Day. I know you were involved in that. Very exciting. Yeah, and Mona Dill, who's in our recreation supervisor, actually is the coordinator of Whale of a Day this year, as she has been since we opened this facility. Because for some reason, it's a lot to try to keep everything going. So it takes a lot of people, and I'm so glad to have such a great staff. And back on Whale of a Day, of course, we want to keep reminding our community to come on down. It's March 2nd. It's always the first Saturday. As far as getting here, there is some parking, but is it easier to go up to the city hall? Yeah, in actuality, the parking here is limited for the vendors and organizations okay. who are actually here. But we have free shuttle service from Don Canavi's office, and so that meets up at City Hall, and the parking all takes place up at the City Hall at 30940 Hawthorne Boulevard. And of course, I'm not going to say you can ever guarantee the whales are going to come by, but they always seem to come by and say hello. Yes. And on that note, we were able to talk to the um, woman who manages the whale census count going out on the back patio. Uh, Lisa Schulman Janiger. She's an unbelievable resource. She said that uh, they're also celebrating like 29 years of being out on the patio we're going on 30 years yeah. um, of, of doing the whale watch and the whale count. So we're going to take a quick break and meet up with Elisa. She talks about the incredible banner year they have of spotting whales. I started the full-time census back on January 1st, 1984. Didn't think we'd still be here 30 years later, but it's really terrific. Well, it's unbelievable. And every year you see something different out here with the whales that you're counting. Talk about just go to this year right now. It's been very exciting. This year's been really exciting. We're up to right now 663 gray whales. That includes the seven this morning. And this is the highest southbound count we've had for 16 years. It's varied from about 250 to almost 900. This is a fantastic year. Can you explain why the numbers are up? Because were they also up last year as well? Yeah, last year and this year we actually had early migrating gray whales. Last year our peak for the southbound happened at the end of December, beginning of January. It's generally about the third week of January. This year we also saw some early gray whales. In fact, we were kind of neck and neck with last year, but now we pulled ahead. This year we believe, for a couple of reasons, one is that the major feeding areas in the Arctic iced over early. So the gray whales could not die below the ice and be able to come up and breathe. They are bottom feeders. So we believe that instead of the shortened days initiating the southbound migration, it was actually the inability to get enough food. So they left early and headed down the coast. But we still peaked about the third week of January, so it's pretty cool. You had one amazing day out here this season. I'm sure they're all amazing for you because you're so passionate about what you're doing. But the one day where you thought you guys saw a pod of 30 whales, that oh. was just huge. Huge, huge, huge day. It was on January 20th, and our census observers here was about three miles offshore. And there were so many blows coming up, so many blows that they knew couldn't be gray whales because gray whales typically are in actually singles or pairs or trios. If we see a group of six whales, we're really excited. We had one group in January of nine. And so they had a whale watch boat go over and check it out. And the whale watch boat reported it was sperm whales. And that would be a very large group of sperm whales that's only been seen once in, well, 30 years. So I dropped everything and headed out on the next available boat. And the census volunteers guided us to that spot so we know it was the same sighting. And even miles away, I could tell it was gray whales. So I was initially very disappointed because I was all excited about sperm whales. But then as I took a look, it was reported to be like 15 or 20. I could tell, oh, it's more than 15. No, no, this is more than 20. This is actually the largest sighting that I've ever seen. The previous sighting, big sighting that we had was five years ago was 18. The biggest I've seen is about 15. So this was absolutely tremendous. I got photos of 18 different flukes and some of the whales didn't fluke. So it was amazing. And the next day they were seen off San Diego, apparently the same group. I always ask you when I talk to you, like, what are the tips for the tricks for seeing them? I have a really difficult time spotting them, even when you're telling me the markers to look through. I mean, I, I, I can see them when they're blowing, and uh, unless they're jumping up, which you don't often see, them breaching. Um, what are tips for people that come out here? Well, number one, have binoculars. Number two, they could be seen any time of day. People will say, is morning or afternoon better? Whenever you could see the water, it's not foggy, hopefully not too windy. But have those binoculars with you. Then we'll look for the flukes or tail of the whale. 
Then also on a calm day, we'll look for prints, their flute prints. Their tail, when it comes up, leaves a smooth circle of water. So we look for any kind of disturbance in the water. So any of those things could be a cue that a whale is here. We also will look for whale watching boats because sometimes boat activity could be a cue that there could be something going on. Right. Speaking of boating activity, there's been a lot of media coverage about the fact that this is the whale migration season. There's a lot of whales out there and it's bringing more people out there. There's been concern that boats are getting too close and people are getting too close. And you're trying to educate about that in terms of, you know, in terms of don't, um, you know, taunt the whales, get too close to the whales. What, what do you want the community to understand about this? Yeah, that is a big issue. From here, we are not impacting the whales at all, but we get to see a lot that's going on. There are marine mammal guidelines that National Marine Fisheries Service has put out, which is in order to avoid harassing them, which is, means changing their behavior, which could cause them to dive longer, move out, or stop feeding, for example, you need to not approach them closer than 100 yards. If you do that, it's possible you have higher chances of changing their behavior. And if you are found guilty of harassment, it could be a fine or jail time. And more, even more importantly, you could get hurt or the whale could get hurt. And that also stands for kayakers, stand-up paddle boarders, sailboats, jet skis, all manner of watercraft need to give the whales space. But there has been concern there's been more harassment happening? Yes, there has. We had particular instances. We've got fin whales, the second largest of all whales, next to blue whales. We've seen about 17 different species of marine mammals here. But fin whales, the last five, six years, have been feeding close to shore. And we've got people paddling out to them or kayaking out to them and getting really close. And what they're doing is waiting for the whale to come up and they're racing over and chasing them down. And in some cases look like they're trying to touch them in order to get you know really, really great videos, for example. And that is just unsafe. We've had specifically paddle boarders who feel they're not making any noise, can't possibly be impacting the whale, but that could be part of the problem because the whale needs to somehow hear these noiseless uh, floating watercraft and not hit them. And if one whale breaches, he could take out 10 of those really close, very, very quiet uh, people who are not intending to bother the whale, but it could actually be t putting their life in danger. So they need to give the whale space. Don't chase them. Don't go in front of them and leapfrog them. Just get in the area and wait, and hopefully you'll have a whale come close to you. Mm -hmm. Well, you've been fortunate. You've had whales come close to you a lot through your life. What does that feel like to, to be with these whales? Oh, it's absolutely amazing. I spend part of my time here, and I spend a lot of time on the water getting photo IDs of different types of whales, such as killer whales, which is my other big passion. It is amazing, particularly with the killer whales. I've been studying them for 30 years to get to know who all the killer whales in California are. So I recognize an individual like it's a family member. Oh, look, there's CA-51. She's got her fourth kid. Oh, how cool. And it's really interesting because I can see their personalities develop. This particular group comes close to us very often. We've seen them four times this season. We've seen them 10 times last season. They come down from Monterey. They hang out around here and eat sea lions. And unfortunately, they actually killed a gray whale calf off here last May, which we didn't want to see. But that's part of the natural way of things. So it's, it's super exciting. We highly recommend people go out on whale watching boats. There are boats that go out all year round and you get to see blue whales, sperm whales, humpback whales, killer whales. Just yesterday we had uh, humpback whales and minke whales and fin whales and common dolphin and bottlenose dolphin and gray whales. This is obviously a great spot to come check it out, especially on whale of a day. Um, that day for you, you're always here. It's very exciting. Oh, it's a fantastic uh, day. This day was actually picked because it, it was the beginning of the peak of the gray whale northbound migration. And we have lots of festivals going on and people telling stories and face painting and crafts and food. Uh, spotters help us. We're out here looking for the whales and every time we see a whale we ring the bell. It's actually a great example of citizen science. Because this is a long-term project, we're the longest um, running gray whale shore-based project in the world. So all this data goes into a database that we could uh, keep that as a reference to see if anything catastrophic happens like an oil spill or something like that. We'll understand is this really a big problem for this area or not. Studying these whales, it's great to be a part of a big project that really means something. If people want to get involved with coming down here and becoming involved with your group, what's the best way to do that? Uh, the best way to do that actually is to stop by and talk to us here. Uh, they can contact me at janiger 
at cox, C-O-X dot net, and I can tell them all about it. And just bring your binoculars and check it out. Try watching with us. We're super flexible around people's time. The only way this project has been able to keep going is because we do schedule the project around people's time. Otherwise, we, there's no funds to back anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so anybody who can help us at any time, we're really, really excited about that and welcome us and welcome them into our census family. And is the LA chapter of the American Cetacean Society, do you have a website you also want to give out? Yeah, we have uh, www.acs-la.org. Every evening I post the day's summary for observer comments and the whales and dolphins that we've seen for the day. So you can go on there and monitor and see what's going on with us. Years ago, about five years ago, I came in here as a visitor and I saw these wonderful people yelling about whales, blue whales, gray whales, humpback whales. And I said, hey, this is fun. I was retired by then. I figure, well, how do I sign up? They said, just come on over. We'll, we'll give you all the information. We'll teach you how to detect the whales in the water. And that was it. That was the beginning of this wonderful experience. And today so far, I think, see behind you, you've had seven southbound. Seven whales, yes. That was earlier in the morning. I just got here about 10 minutes ago, so I didn't see the seven. But uh, I'm sure we're going to see more than seven today. So what's it like when you're sitting here, you've got your binoculars going, and there's there you see one? The first thing you say is, blow! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, then we start screaming and giving out uh, position. We have the binoculars have a uh, compass on the bottom in a reticle, which gives us the distance from the horizon to where the whale is swimming. And we can say 10 mils, 20 mils, 65 mils, whatever. And then also the position, 260 degrees. And then uh, everybody, it's got the same type of binoculars. We all, you know, position the, uh, the binoculars on the whale so we can track it. You know, every time I go out on that patio out here and I talk to these people that spend all day long, Holly, looking for whales to help with the count, I just think of one word, patience. I mean, you need to be patient. The whales just don't pop up when you want them to. But uh, any, do you have any tips? Um, I would suggest early morning, not because they come out more, but because the water tends to be flatter in the morning and it's easier to spot them if they are out there. Sometimes in the afternoon when the wind picks up, the waves you know, come up and it's hard to tell if it's a blow or a splash if you're not used to looking at it. That being said, it doesn't mean that during the middle of a wedding at five o'clock, there won't be <laughs> whales breaching behind your event. So, and that's how they are rewarded. That is what every whale watcher um, is hoping for is something spectacular, a um, mating ceremony or the spy hops or the breach or the baby that kind of hangs in the area. So that's that's their reward. And again, of course, Whale of a Day celebrates the migration, um, which takes place December till the end of April, pretty much. Is that the best time to come and, and catch these whales? Yeah, that's when we see them. They actually start, of course, they leave their area in the frigid Arctic waters much sooner, and then they are getting back much later. But we're kind of at the tail end of our journey because they're headed down towards Baja to have babies and make more babies. And uh, so we see them here, like you said, from December 1st onwards into the first couple of weeks of May now. So it's it, the season tends to be a little extended these okay. days. As we start to wrap it up, anything you want our community to know, be aware of, come whale of a day on March 2nd, just besides to come on and be here. No, just just to make it here. It, it, is, it is such a fabulous event, from the face painting to the duck toss. Um, and it's a, it really is a great time had by all. It's really, really fun. And about a website in terms of getting more information? Do they go on the city website? or? Right? Absolutely. It'll be listed on the front page of the city's website. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you here at Whale of a Day, as always. And, of course, this place, come down to Point Vicente Interpretive Center all year round. All the time. You just, what, close three days a year here? Yeah. Christmas, New Year's, and Thanksgiving. <laughs> all right. Thanks for all you're doing. Thank you, and we'll Liz. we'll see you in Whale of a Day. I'm Liz Brown Swanson here with Holly Starr. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. And we definitely want to see you here at Whale of a Day. Take care. Thank you.